so we're here with Misha Dollar. Misha, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Pleasure to be here, Mark. So my name is Misha Dollar. I'm Chair Professor in Wireless Technologies at King's College in London. And uh, our center has been trying for the last 10 years to contribute to the design of 3G, 4G, 5G, and now 6G technologies. So how on earth did you get involved in mobile telephony? When did that come about? Total accident. I want to become a pianist. So I was enrolled in a conservatory. Uh, I chickened out, probably the only time in my life I chickened out. I st uh, started to study physics. For personal reasons, I had to become an electrical engineer. And then I ended up in London at King's College with Hamid Agwami. I love telecoms and the rest is history. Fantastic. Well, you sound like the right man for us to be interviewing today. So just really quickly, there's a lot of talk in the press at the moment about 5G for, you know, the wrong reasons, really. Mass towers being burned, lots of concerns from people who perhaps can't get all the right information. Just give us a little bit of an overview. What on earth is the G? What is the three, the four and the five? So the generations of telecoms have evolved quite remarkably over the last 10, 20, 30 years. 2G was all about digital audio, just making the quick phone call. 3G was the first introduction of a bit of web browsing, it was quite lousy, but we could do it. 4G was a quantum leap, we could suddenly browse the internet, we could watch videos and have proper video phone calls. And 5G will be doing that and also will be having a very low latency, very low delay engagement, which allows us to do things we were not able to do before, such as to build emotional bonds during uh, video calls. Wow, so it's literally about it being really, really live. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, so the low latency is so important uh, because with low latency, we observe we are starting to build emotional bonds because our brains uh, process information within 10, 20 milliseconds. Anything which comes in within that time horizon feels immediate. So 5G technology is the first technology which allows us to give that feeling of immediacy, uh, even though we are geographically separated. And, and how does it work? What's the difference between 4G technically and 5G? Is, is there a big difference? 5G has a few evolutionary elements, uh, using elements we did in 4G really well, but also some revolutionary ones. An example being we are using higher frequencies, uh, relatively higher frequencies, at uh, 26 to 28 gigahertz, allowing us to transmit much more information, much shorter packets, and therefore essentially get these high data rates with a very, very low latency. Another big revolution is the softwareization. So maybe the consumer won't feel that so much, but from an operator point of view, to maintain a network, which is not just boxes you need to replace, but actually lines of software makes it a really, really efficient piece of technology. Wow. And, and, and there's been a lot of talk um, in, in the press from people that, that, that somehow these two things are linked together. The pandemic that's going on at the moment is forcing us all to work from home and said, you know, people being sick and, and, and a lot of tragedies. But is there any, is there any you know, um, link between the two? Could there be a link between the two? So I know that science sometimes is a little bit boring and probably could be better in communicating our findings, but I can assure you there is absolutely no causality one or the other, uh, meaning we have conducted very rigorous tests by uh, bodies which have been established for doing nothing else, such as ERCNIB, which is doing the uh, ionization measurements, so the health impact measurements on the human body, and they have established very rigorous guidelines which... Uh, uh, ensure that there's absolutely no health impact onto any living being and uh, the operators and the technologies obeying these guidelines and that has been verified by Ofcom uh, not long ago and that report has been published recently. So I can assure you that there's absolutely no health uh, impact of 5G onto anything happened currently in the ecosystem. Now, what we need to make sure is that we don't confuse correlation with causality. So correlation means two things happen at the same time. Causality means one causes the other. So could it be that in an area where you have 5G, there's also a COVID-19 incident? The answer is yes, very likely. But uh, is 5G causing COVID? We can tell you this is definitely not the case. 
Great. So a little bit then just, um, you know, uh, could you explain really what what all those sort of different gigahertz bandwidths have been talked about? You know, there's 3.6, 3.4, 5, all these different things. And, and it seems in the press that this is being sort of grabbed hold of by these sort of conspiracy th th theorists. So 5G uses uh, three bands, roughly, from uh, from our telecom point of view. One is called the sub one gigahertz band. So that is around 700 megahertz, and this is where TV has been for you know for a century almost. So you know we have had no kind of uh, health reports from TV radiations, which by the way was radiating at a much much higher power. So I think we are safe there. Then we are using what we call the mid bands, and three, 5G specifically is going to be using the bands around 3.5 gigahertz. Now, this is all within the same super frequencies what currently 4G is using, 3G is using, Wi Fi is using, your microwave oven is using, Bluetooth is all using. You know, there are a lot of technologies have been using that tech for the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. And again, we haven't had any specific evidence that any of these technologies, not even Wi-Fi, which operates in the microwave band, which is what you use to heat your food, not even Wi-Fi, uh, there's evidence that it causes any damage. So 5G is uh, not uh, going to cause that, that damage either. So in the mid bands, we don't expect that to happen. A new band, uh, new band for telecoms is uh, what we call the millimeter wave band, which is a bit higher. And I'm saying a little bit because we need to understand the relative terms here. Whilst we're going from 3.5 gig to 26 gig for telecom is a big leap. If we zoom out and we look at anything from very low frequency up to gamma rays, gamma radiation, which comes from the from the universe, then you will see this is like a 0.001% change in frequency. So very minuscule. Uh, that band has also been used also uh, already before, also Wi-Fi, wide gig, etc. Police uses their radar in there. And again, you know, we haven't had any complaints that police radar is causing any form of illness. So we do not expect 5G to do that either. So from your point of view, Misha, you, you'll be, as soon as there's a big 5G network out there, you'll be jumping onto it. Absolutely. 5G is a fant fantastic technology. You know, well, great data rate, low latency, and uh, we keep evolving. Of course, as an academic, we always look into the next generation. For us, 5G is a bit passe right now. We are to 6G naturally, you know, trying to understand what are the trends and the technologies. What on earth will we need 6G for? I feel like I'm starting to turn into an old man now, but 6G, will we really need something faster than 5? We'll see. It's a good question you're asking here. So, you know, the demand side is very, very important. And in fact, that's something I've taken very seriously with 5G as well. And probably I'm the one who started really to ask the question, what, what would the industry do with 5G? I posted that question at Mobile World Congress in 2014 on stage, and we started working on that. And that's really what we have done as King's College London, talking to the verticals. And 6G will not be different. I cannot give you an answer right now, Alex. I'm sorry for that. So we still need a bit of time understanding whether we need that. But because we know how the trends in telecoms work, we know what the capabilities will be. So I can tell you already, 6G will be 0 0.1 uh, a second, uh, you know, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.01. So 1,100 microseconds uh, latency. It will probably anything between 10 to 100 gigabits per second, uh, extremely high density and efficiency. So we know what it can do from a tech point of view we just don't know how to do it and we don't know why we're doing that but give us a decade and i'll give you the answers fantastic well you never know it could be us two again in a decade but look in the meantime keep safe misha and uh, and we'll speak to you again soon you too thanks cheers